What's up, family? Man, this is gonna be a doozy. It's gonna be a doozy, okay? I'm a little nervous, man. It's gonna be a doozy. It's gonna be kind of heavy. It's gonna be kind of heavy. Um, but we have to grow up. We have to grow up. You know, one of the hardest things for me that I had to deal with was, man, being misunderstood, you know? being misunderstood. And I don't even know if I've made a video about this, you know, out of the 800 plus videos I have up, I don't even think that I've talked about this topic, this young lady that I'm about to talk about. Um, I know I haven't. And, and that trips me out, you know, um, cause it's something that I've struggled with for a long time, you know, being misunderstood and I'm still misunderstood. You know, people still take me wrong. You know what I mean? Um, as a black man wearing crystals, oh, you got the devil in you, that's satanic, that's witchcraft, that's what people do, you know, all that stupid shit they spew. Oh, you cussing, oh, that's not godly, that's not intelligent, that's unintelligent to use profanity. Man, it's all fucking words, you know what I mean? Grow the fuck up. It's just words. We have to stop being so damn retarded, you know what I mean? And stay with me. And I don't mean any offense by that, but we have to stop being so fucking ignorant. Oh, this is good words. This is bad words. This is good language. This is bad. Who the fuck said that? Who the fuck makes these fucking rules? Why are you still spewing this stupid ass dogma? You a grown ass man, a grown ass woman. Learn to think for yourself. Years ago. When I was in church, Christian church, they were talking all this stupid stuff. Oh, you can't go to the movies. We're talking about being misunderstood. Stay with me. We're going somewhere today. There's tomorrow. You can't go to the movies. That's the devil's territory. And I'm taking my kids to a fucking drive in. I'm sitting out up under the stars that God made, but I'm in the devil's territory. You can't take your kids to the movies to watch these cartoons and all this other stuff. That's devil stuff. And we'll do it. But your ass as a preacher can sit here and watch Cowboys and Indians and talk about how these you these are your favorite shows. You love Westerns. And all the Westerns I grew up watching have Cowboys coming and killing fucking Indians, slaughtering them, raping them. All the cowboy movies I grew up watching had a bunch of drunks and a bunch of hoes. And people conniving and stealing and robbing, trying to get somebody else's property. But that's godly. But because I want to take my kids to the drive-ins to watch some damn fucking cartoon. That's ungodly because your ass said so. And that's all it come down to because your ass says, because the preacher said that's ungodly because the preacher man said that's the devil's territory. Thus it makes it the devil to bullshit. I'm calling bullshit and all the bullshit now. You know what I mean? Grow the fuck up. They said, oh, you can't cuss. You can't say shit. Because that's profanity and that's bad words. That's bad language. And so I asked him, I said, well, wait a minute. If I get up in the morning and I stub my toe and I say, oh, shit, fuck, damn, because I hurt my toe. I'm not cussing nobody out. I stub my fucking toe and the shit hurt. I'm talking about being misunderstood. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. I stubbed my toe. I'm not directing this at any one person. I stubbed my toe. And the shit hurt. And I said, shit. Damn. Fuck. Why? I'm releasing the energy. I'm expressing the pain. It's not negative. It's not good. I'm releasing the pain. And when you yell out, when you scream out, you're releasing energy. Stay with me. And I had to explain to these people. That's no different from me stubbing my toe 
and said, shoot, man, crap. You know, I'm saying the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. The intent is the exact same. If the intent is the same, if the release of energy is the same, and it's not meant to harm anybody, it's not meant to tear anybody down or anything of that stupid nature, then what deems it bad? Then what deems those words as bad words? What deems those words as ungodly words? We have to grow the fuck up. We got to stop being so fucking ignorant and thinking we know everything and being so fucking self-righteous and almighty. We got to stop tearing people down because they don't talk like us, because they don't look like us. And it pisses me the fuck off when we as black people or other cultures do it to each other. Well, there's my, us as minorities, put it that way. When our whole fucking history has been Caucasian people tearing us the fuck down. Judging us by the color of our fucking skin. Going off on us, not wanting shit to do with us. Saying we had the devil in us. Therefore, we got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Because we got the devil in us. And our skin color is a fucking curse. Oh, we going on today. It is what it is. You know what I mean? If you ain't ready for it, turn it off because it's going to fuck up your ignorance. We have to grow the fuck up. This is not a black or white thing. It's an ignorant thing. It's an ignorance thing. Grow the fuck up. If you don't like nobody judging you, if you don't like nobody putting you down or misunderstanding you or blasting you and not even taking the time to get to know you, not even taking the time to get to conversate with you, chop it up with you, to get to understand why you said what you said, why you do what you do. Ah, now I got a different perspective because I spent some time with you. I know who you are. I know what you're about. I know what you represent. I know your intent. I'm not just going by your looks. I'm not just going by what everybody else has said. I'm not taking your shit out of context. Talking about being misunderstood. What does that got to do with being misunderstood? If I don't take the time to get to know you, if I don't take the time to listen to you and not listen to you with the intent of blasting what you're saying, but listening to you, listening to your soul talk, listening to your heart talk. The words are just fucking words. I was talking to my wife last night, laying there, and I was telling her, I said, man, we have to learn, not just me and her, but just talking to them. We have to learn how to hear each other's hearts. We have to learn how to hear each other's spirit talk to us. See, because words, their meanings change. Their words, you can say one thing, but mean something totally different. Because words have different meanings depending on who you're talking to. I can say, man, that's freaking bad. And people are like, oh, people from the hood, people from the streets are like, oh, he means good. 
But when you say, oh man, that's freaking bad to somebody that don't know or somebody that don't speak like that, that don't understand what you're saying, they say, oh, he said that's bad. That means it's not good. But that's not what I said. I said that was bad. As it meant, that's the shit. That's fucking nice. You know what I mean? Same fucking word. Different meanings to different people. Totally opposite meaning. Talking about being misunderstood. But see, when you listen to somebody's heart, when you listen to somebody's soul and you're connected on that level, it don't matter the fucking words they choose. Because you're connected to them. You understand what they're saying. You understand how they feel. And they ain't even got to say anything. And you feel them. You understand them. Some of you misunderstood. I'll share a story with you guys. And I've never shared this story. And most of you think you already know this story. Misunderstood. A young lady. Beautiful young lady. Drop dead gorgeous, fine as fuck. You know what I mean? Fine as wine. You know what I mean? This lady was bad. And all the guys were gawking at her. She was growing up. She didn't want nothing to do with guys. She didn't want nothing to do with women like that either. All she wanted to do was worship her God. That's all she wanted to do. Is just worship God. The way she knew how. The God that she knew. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. That's all she wanted to do in life. That's her whole ambition. I just want to please God. I just want to worship my God. I just want to be a servant to my God. That's all she wanted. That's all she wanted. And so she became she became part of the church and she got of age. And she, she was going through all the stuff, right? The training and stuff. And people and the other women, because it was just for women, right? In this group. And the other women that didn't look as nice. Man, you know how women are. The same as guys. Start hating. Start getting jealous. Start doing stupid shit to sabotage her. Why? Because she ain't doing it right. And so although she's doing it right, she's not caring herself right. And although she's caring herself right, these motherfuckers just low-key hating. These motherfuckers just jealous. So she progresses and she moves up. Great at what she does. People come from all over, especially guys, to worship in the temple because they know she's going to be doing the services. They know she's going to be doing it. And so they're coming in and people from all over are coming and they're just gawking at her beauty. Doing anything and everything they can to get some time with her. She ain't trying to hear none of that. Man, she's just there to worship God. She's just there to please God. She's just there to serve her God. That's all she wants in life. It's to be used by God. She didn't ask for the beauty. She had no control over how beautiful she was. She had no control over how graceful she was. It was just natural. It just flowed. And people thought that she was put on. People thought she was doing extra just to be the way that she was. But it was natural beauty. It was natural grace and elegance. And the people that thought she was putting on was all the people that she rejected. The guys that she dismissed because she wasn't there to entertain them. She wasn't there to be seen by them. She wasn't there looking for their attention. She was there to serve their God, to serve God. And so the women were mad at her because all the guys wanted to see her. 
The guys were mad at her because she's rejecting them all. And so, you know how we think. Oh, she thinks she too good. Who the fuck this bitch thinks she is? This bitch acting high society. This bitch is acting boozy. And we do. Y'all know how we do. This bitch got to be gay because she don't want me. Y'all know how it is. If she don't want to do, she got to be gay. Nah, motherfucker. She just don't want your raggedy ass. All she wanted to do is worship God. And part of the rules, part of the, the, the thing is to, to worship her God, to please her God, was she had to abstain from sex. She had to be pure. She had to be a virgin. And she took that serious. And so all these other people thinking, all these other women, these dudes, I know she fucking somebody. I know she getting up to somebody. I know she doing something for somebody. She too damn pretty not to be doing something. She too damn pretty for, uh, man, I'll be the biggest fucking hell up in here. I'll be having all these motherfuckers paying me some shit. I'll be, yeah, y'all know how it is. Don't act new. You know what it is. You know what I mean? You know what it is. And so, man, but all she wanted to do was worship her God. All she wanted to do was be used by God. And all these other motherfuckers are jealous, are hateful, misunderstanding her. And so, and some of the people started comparing her to her God. Her God was Athena. Now, so some of the people start comparing her beauty to Athena. Man, she's prettier than Athena. Man, her beauty rivals that of goddess Athena. They say that Athena heard the conversations. Athena heard the comparisons. Athena saw the commotions of all the people coming in to the temples. Not to worship her, but to see her high priestess, to see this priest, to see this lady do the sacrifice, to see this lady offer up these sacrifices to Athena. They wasn't coming to see Athena. They wasn't coming to acknowledge Athena. They're coming to see this beautiful woman. And Athena heard it and knew it. I'm talking about being misunderstood. And so, the young lady's out. Ever since she was a little kid, that's all she wanted to do. Her whole life was dedicated to pleasing and worshiping Athena. Everything about her was to bring praise to Athena. Everything about her was about bringing praise and honor. her God. And one day she's out and about and they say that this God, Poseidon, him and Athena was having this quarrel fight. Poseidon saw this young lady. And this young lady's name meant protector. That's what her name meant, was protector. This young lady who want to worship Athena. This young lady who did worship Athena. This young lady who everything she did was to lift up her God. And her name meant protector. So she's out and about along the shore one day. And they said Poseidon came up. The God of the sea, the God of the water, came up and saw her beauty. And he hollered at her. She dismissed him because of her dedication to Athena, because of her loyalty to Athena, because of her love and commitment to pleasing Athena. She rejected him. And she kept rejecting him. One day she was out. And he was he was done. It's like, bitch, do you know who the fuck I am? How the fuck you gonna reject me? Bitch, you must not know about me. 
You know what I mean? I'm sure that's what was going through his head. Bitch, you better ask somebody about me. You got me fucked up. He hollered at her again. Rejected him. Told him what she was about. Ma. He wasn't trying to hear that shit. He was looking at that ass, looking at that body. Like, I'm about to tear this shit up. I'm not giving a fuck of what you talking about. All this shit you spewing right now. Baby, I ain't trying to hear that shit right now. Nah, baby. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Holler at me for a second. I don't give a fuck about this bullshit you talking about. And I'm sure that's what was going through his head. She, she tried to run away from him. She ran up into the temple. Pleading for her God to protect her. He's chasing her. She's running away from this man. She runs into her temple where she's done all these sacrifices. She's lifted up all these praise. Gave all these offerings. Said all these prayers to Athena. Had all these people coming from miles and miles away just to give offering and praise to Athena. She's done all this work. From a pure heart. She's done all this work. Being completely transparent. And now she's pleading to her God. She's pleading to God. To protect her. And to keep her. And this man comes in. And rapes her. And impregnates her. In the temple. And it's a trick because I relate to this story. There's so many aspects about this story that's my story. I shared with you guys how, man, I'm crying out to God as a six-year-old kid. All I want to do at that time is like, all right, I'll worship you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say. <clears throat> I'll do these things. And then the following week, I was molested at church. It fucked me up. It fucked me up. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. And so here's this young lady who's dedicated her life to pleasing God, who dedicated her life to worshiping and helping other people come worship God. And now she's in trouble. Some man's pursuing her. Some man's trying to violate her. And she's crying out to God for help. And her God doesn't answer her. Kind of like when I prayed as a six-year-old kid. Asking God. Man, God. I grew up in a Christian home. apostolic asking God man give me the faith of Job the love and compassion of David the wisdom of Solomon the strength of Samson the teaching ability of Paul and I'll go where you want me to go I'll say what you want me to say this is the prayer that me this little bald headed black guy Cried out to God at six years old. Give me these five characteristics. I'll go anywhere, say anything, do anything you ask me to do. And God didn't respond. God didn't even acknowledge my prayer requests. It went silent. And then the next week, I was molested at church by a dude and then the week after that I was molested again in my own home by another dude my life is fucked up my world has been flipped upside down where the fuck are you at God you know what I mean be real all I wanted to do was worship you all I wanted to do will serve you. And this is the shit you allow to happen? And 
talking about being misunderstood. So I relate to the story. So this young lady's crying out for help. And God goes silent. I want to share my story in there with her story because I know some of these ignorant ass Christians gonna get on here talking about, well, because she wasn't crying out to the right God. She wasn't crying out to Yahweh and all this other bullshit. I cried out to God. I cried out to Yahweh and he went silent on me. You know what I mean? Just like Athena went silent on this young lady. So, this guy violated the temple, violated the sanctuary, and violated this young lady. And he leaves. Him and Athena had some had a squabble going on. Him and Athena had some issues going on. And so to this guy, Poseidon, what better way to piss her off? What better way to get back at her? Her temple is supposed to be a sanctuary a purity. I'm going to go up in there and I'm going to violate that shit. I'm going to go up in there. I'm going to have sex up in there. I'm not just going to have sex. I'm going to force my way and do what I want with one of hers. Her most beautiful priestess. The one that everybody's coming to see. The one that everybody's coming to look at. I'm going to do what I want with her. And he did. And so this lady, man, she's broken and she, she shook, crying out to Athena. And Athena answers now. But Athena doesn't answer the way we think she should. Athena comes in and she's raged that her temple was violated. Athena, Athena comes in and she's pissed. She doesn't take this young lady in, knowing that she just got violated, knowing that she just, all she wanted to do was worship her her whole life. Athena don't take any of that into consideration. Athena comes in, pissed the fuck off. They talked about how beautiful this lady's hair was, how it just flowed and glowed and just whoop doo doo whoop. And now Athena's pissed. Athena curses the girl. She doesn't love her. She curses her. She doesn't help her. She curses her. They say her hair turned to snakes. You guys know the story of Medusa. Medusa, this is what transpired. This is her story. We don't talk about her story. We just talk about her hair being snakes. We just talk about her being a curse. We just talk about her turning men to stone and all this evil shit. We just talk about her being a fucking monster. But we don't talk about what transpired and how she became a fucking monster. We blame her for being a monster as though she had anything to do with that. As though that was her choice. And so, here's Athena turning this young lady into this monster. Don't know if it was out of jealousy. This is her way of getting back at the young lady now. Now all the attention will go back to Athena being the most beautiful, blah, 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 because everybody was saying it was this girl now. And curse the young girl. Everything that she looks at that's alive will be turned to stone. That's the curse from the God, her God, who she loved. Who she adored. Who she worshipped. And so she flees. And she goes into this old temple. Raggedy. Ruined temple. And she's there in hiding. And she's broken and shook. All her life. 
all she wanted to do was please Athena. All she wanted to do was be pleasing in the sight of Athena. All she wanted to do was to honor and bring praise and glory to her God. And her God allowed her to be raped. And her God turned her to this monster. So this young lady's in this temple hiding. Broken. She has such a pure heart. Everything about her was pure. You see, they misconstrued the story. They make the story out to be that she was just killing people just to kill people. She was killing all these guys just to kill them. She was some evil bitch. That's how they tell the story. To justify what transpired. So here's this young lady who was pure in heart. turned into this ugly monster. Here's the trick. So even while in this ruined temple, this abandoned temple, she went from being on top of the mountain in the light down into the darkness, into the dungeon. She went from being the center of attention to loneliness. So she's in this abandoned temple. And what does she do? She starts making things to please Athena, to worship Athena. To glorify Athena. Why? Because that was her nature. It didn't matter what transpired. She wanted to please her God. Regardless of what transpired. She wanted to please her God. And even in this state of loneliness. Even in this wretched state. All she wanted to do was please her God. And the trip is, men heard about this monster turning men into to stone. And so you got all these hunters, you got all these people that wanted to go kill her. They wanted to capture Medusa's head. They wanted to chop off this serpent head. You know what I mean? This woman that had head and every strand of hair or the locks, whatever she had. Man, it was snakes. And so they wanted to be able to cut her head off, to be able to hold it up and look at what I did. I killed this monster. I killed this beast. And so you have this loving, compassionate, giving, pure young lady. Whose God turned her into a monster on the outward, but on her inside, she was still pure. On her inside, she was still loving. On her inside, she was still giving. On her inside, she still wanted to worship God. Regardless of what she looked like, she still wanted to worship God. But people saw her. They saw this monster. But her nature was godlike. Her nature was love. Her nature was giving. Her nature was worshiping. Her nature was service. How can I be of service to you? Regardless of what I look like, how can I be of service? 
So you got all these guys ramped up, amped up over all the stuff that they've heard. And y'all know how legends go. Y'all know how stories go. Motherfuckers lie and multiply and amplify shit to make it worse than what it is. We still do that stupid shit today. So you got all these people coming to kill Medusa. And so this, she's in hiding away from everybody. So that she can't harm anybody. And they're still coming after her. They're not coming after her to worship her now. Now they're coming after her to kill her. They don't think she's so beautiful no more. She's the ugliest thing alive. She's a monster. She's a beast. And we have to eliminate her. How do you go from being the most side after, the most loved, the most worshipped, the most adored to the most hated? The most hunted? And yet she still wants to worship. She still wants to worship her God. She still had a pure heart. And so all these guys came after her and all she did was look at who's coming after her. Just the looks of her turned these people to stone. These, she's not bothering nobody. She's not hunting nobody. We've misunderstood the story. We've made Medusa out to be the predator. We've made Medusa out to be the villain. we made Medusa out to be the bad guy because of how she looks. I relate to that story. I relate to that story in so many ways, you know what I mean? Man, people told me I had the devil in me because I got tattoos. People told me I have the devil in me because I wear crystals and I wear earrings. I don't have any of them right now, but I do. You know what I mean? And people say all kinds of... There's always fucking stupid as ignorant as Christians. And so because of how I look, I'm demonized. Oh, you look like you just got off the pen. I've never been in the fucking penitentiary other than working in the penitentiary. I went to work in the penitentiary. I didn't live in the penitentiary. I ain't never been in a fucking pen. But we look at people and we project all of this shit on them. You look like a fucking hoe. You look like a womanizer. You look like you got a whole bunch of women. You look so pretty. You look like you got a bunch of dudes. You got to grow up. And so here's these guys coming to pursue Medusa. And every one of them died. Every one of them died, except for one. And so all these guys, none of them ever returned. They all turned to stone. And the trip. The one that cut off her head. The one that killed Medusa. The story goes, that he took her head. And all these other beasts and monsters. He held up Medusa's head. And they killed off all these other titans. All these other monsters. All these other creatures that he had to face in life. And he presented Medusa's head to Athena. Athena so moved by this young girl. Athena, the God that cursed her, the God that gave her the snakes for hair, the God that made her look the way that she did, 
the God that rejected her. So moved by this young lady's worship in the temple, even after being cursed, even after being rejected and abandoned by society and hunted by society, she still has a pure heart. She still has a loving nature. And she's still worshiping her God, even in the hell hole she was in. She went from the best temple to a broken down, abandoned, rejected one. And she still offered worship. Don't allow your circumstances to change your nature. Don't allow your circumstances to stop you from being loving. To stop you from being pure of heart. Don't allow what these motherfuckers do to you and the stupid shit they spew on you and the stupid shit they say about you to change your nature. And so Athena, they say, is moved by this girl's worship, her dedication, her commitment. See, she wasn't committed just because she was in that beautiful temple. She wasn't committed because the lights were on that temple. She wasn't committed because all the people were there and worshiping and looking at her. That's not why she was doing it. <coughs> Excuse me. That was her nature. And regardless of her circumstances, her nature didn't change. Now the lights ain't on her. Now she's not in the, the palace. She's not being adored and loved and sought after for her beauty. She's been hunted. People are trying to kill her. And she didn't even do anything to deserve it. People are trying to kill her. Not for anything she's done. People are trying to destroy her. People are tearing down her, her story, her legacy, her life work, everything. Not because she did anything wrong. Not because she fucked up. They're pursuing her. They're hunting her. And so Perseus is granted the right stuff to kill her. To put her out of her misery. Perseus then takes Medusa's head and presents it to Athena. Athena so moved by her commitment. Athena so moved by her dedication, her loyalty, her true nature. Athena puts her head on her shield. And so when you look at the shield of Athena, this goddess, you see the head of Medusa. It's a protector. It's a protector. I told you earlier that Medusa's name means protector. Talking about being misunderstood. People are going to come after you. People are going to say all kinds of shit about you. It is what it is. They do it to me. You know what I mean? You have to know who you are. You have to know who you're connected to. Who you're in alignment with. You have to love yourself. You have to value yourself. So you're not moved by what everybody say. So you're not moved by what people do. Because one minute, they'll love the fuck out of you. The next minute, they hate the shit out of you. And they're despising you. And they want to kill you. And sabotage your character. And everything about you. They want to erase everything about you. As though you never existed. 
as though you've never done anything good, as though you've never done anything righteous. You have to know who you are. You have to be connected to God. And see, so many people get up and they spew this stupid shit. Oh, she was worshiping the wrong gods and blah, 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 blah. And that's why all that shit happened to her. I wasn't worshiping Athena. I believed in Jesus Christ, Joshua. I was worshiping Yahweh. The most high. And all this shit happened to me as a six-year-old kid. So miss me with the bullshit. Miss me with your self-righteousness. Miss me with your fucking ignorance. I said ignorance. Because you're too ignorant to understand that you're ignorant. We have to grow up. This video ain't for everybody. This video is for the chosen ones. The ones that call themselves chosen. The ones that know that they're a child of God. The star seeds, whatever you call yourself, I don't give a damn. You know what I mean? I don't care. People are going to love you one minute. And they're going to try to destroy you the next. It is what it is. Get over it. You know what I mean? Get over it. My hope and prayer is that something has been said. To help you understand. Man. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be misunderstood. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Don't spend your life. Trying to please people. Don't mend your, uh, spend your life. Trying to convince people. Of who you are. Man just be you. Fuck the world. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that. Man. Fuck the world. You know, it is what it is. You came here for a purpose. Walk in that purpose. Don't get distracted and stop fulfilling your purpose. Trying to convince people that you're not a bad guy. Trying to convince people that you're a righteous person. That you're a loving, compassionate, giving person. Man, fuck them. If they can't see you for who you really are, they're not here for you. You're not here for them. Fuck them. Keep moving. If they can't recognize you for who you are, it's because they're not connected to you. Everybody ain't supposed to be connected to you. You didn't come here for everybody. It's a whole bunch of religious motherfuckers that couldn't recognize Jesus. It's a whole lot of religious motherfuckers that didn't see Jesus for who he was. It's a whole lot of religious motherfuckers that had Jesus killed, that try to sabotage Jesus. The story's the same. Different circumstances, but the story's the same. Jesus comes in on the donkey, and these people are yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're worshiping Jesus, throwing down palm leaves in front of them. They're worshiping him. They're adoring him. Palm Sunday. Jesus comes in. And the crowds are worshiping him. A few days later. They choose a murderer. Over Jesus. A few days later. They have the option. Man. Man. Let Jesus live who they were just worshiping. Or let this murderer go free. And these same ignorant ass motherfuckers that was shouting and praising Jesus. These same ignorant ass motherfuckers that was shouting Hosanna, Hosanna and all this other bullshit. The same motherfuckers chose a murderer and set him free. And just condemned the person that they were worshiping. To no fault of his own. All he did was want to bring glory to his father. All Jesus did was heal people. 
All Jesus did was feed the poor and those that were hungry. All Jesus did was try to bring glory and honor back to the temple, back to God. And he checked the motherfucking religious people for their bullshit. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You didn't come here to please people. You came here to be a beacon of light. You came here to be a beacon of love, a beacon of hope in a dark world. And the trip is... As dark as this world is, these motherfuckers think it's light. You know what I mean? They flipped everything upside down. As ignorant as this world is, these motherfuckers convinced they're woke. These motherfuckers convinced they're in light. It is what it is. You didn't come here to argue with them. You didn't come here to debate with them. You didn't come here to try to convince them. You came here to be a beacon of hope, of love. Anything outside of that is a distraction. Like Medusa, stay true to your nature. Regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what they sang about you. One minute they were praising her. One minute they were adoring her. One minute they were lusting after her. One minute they were coming from miles away just to see her, just to hear her, just to be in her presence. In the next minute, they're hunting her. They're trying to kill her. I love you guys. Happy healing. Peace.